they claim that our eyes will just be created a slightly different from what they are when we talk to see things are. Welcome to Strange Familiars. Tonight we're going to be talking with John, who has several experiences he'd like to share with us. Some childhood stories about shadow figures and orbs that he saw at night in two separate houses. Some experiences at a cemetery. A photo of a demon he took that scared him so much he threw it away. A Bigfoot with a woman in white story. Some lights in the woods and more. Before we get to John's story, though, let's talk about our wonderful sponsor, 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy. You know that puppies can be wild and crazy whirlwinds of destruction, don't you, Allison? I am aware of that. There's some puppies at American Daydream. They do. They have these three beautiful little puppies. Where you have your antique stand. Well, if they're looking for help with their puppies, (laughs) 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy can help them. Whether it's issues with potty training, mouthing and biting, fear and nervousness, barking, chewing on furniture or shoes, etc. Crate training, hyperactivity issues, leash training, and more. 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy can teach you what to do and also, and perhaps more importantly, what not to do. You can find 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy at sithappens.us. Look for the 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy link at the top of the page. They have online sources like video lessons, a Facebook group, which you can join and interact with other puppy owners, and of course, one-on-one options are available as well. Again, you can find them at sithappens.us. Look for the 90 Days to the Perfect Puppy link at the top of the page. All right, let's go ahead and hear John's stories. All right, tonight we're talking with John, who has a variety of experiences to share with us. John, as much as you're comfortable, let us know where these things happened. I know people don't always like to be very specific. You can be, you know, as specific or as general as you want. And when they happened, and just start wherever you want and walk us into it. And I'll ask questions as we go along. Okay. First of all, I want to say I'm a big fan of the show. Well, thank you. I've been listening for, I don't know, a while probably listen to all i'm pretty, pretty sure i'm caught up on all of the episodes at this point well thank you so, so I'm much a big fan thanks so much and it's really cool to have an outlet where people can kind of talk and share this kind of stuff like the lady in the last one said okay where do we start at the beginning yeah if you want to go in chronological order that that's fine i think that's usually the the simplest way to do it okay so i guess like my introduction into just kind of like being interested in the weird and paranormal and things like that kind of started with when I was younger, like probably I'm, I'm not the best with like timelines, but probably between the age of like five and eight at like a childhood home Mm -hmm. where this is actually kind of funny because it's not like, this was more just like kind of like play and like figment of your imagination kind of thing. But like when I was little in my childhood home, we had uh, like a basement downstairs that had a couple of pool tables, laundry room, uh, stuff like that. And I used to kind of like walk downstairs and the, the, the cord, like the light cord was at the bottom of the stairs and it was, it would be like dark, like pitch black. And you would have to walk down probably like 20 wooden, like creaky wooden wooden stairs to get to the light cord. And I used to kind of like play a game and see like how scared I would get before I would pull the cord when I got down to the light at the bottom of the stairs. Um, So I would like, you know, peek out into, there were some shelves, like stuff like that, like peek out, and uh, kind of like taunt, just like say like stupid things to kind of like, it was just like feed off of fear, you know? Mm-hmm. 
I like I would be like, where are you at? Or like just say like little silly things. I would actually see like shadow figures almost like come out from behind shelves in the basement. I don't think that they were real, but it was just kind of like playful figment of my imagination. I'm young and like terrified because I'm walking down the stairs to get to the light cord to pull it and just kind of like teasing myself, you know? Yeah. I was going to ask if you thought they, there was something you sort of, uh, brought on not saying they're weird but and not you know but sort of uh in your fear just sort of like uh worked yourself up to to seeing things in the dark yeah which this i'm always sharing this because it's like the beginning of like a whole bunch of random things like throughout my entire life up until like i don't know months ago i'm 36 now so like that that's one story but i used to do it like all the time like i would see how many how many stairs I could get down before I got scared and ran back upstairs without ever making it down to the bottom to pull the cord, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. But that was like, I was like 10, 15 minutes from here, like childhood home. But I had also in that house started to like at night when I would go to sleep, I shared a room with like my brother and sister at the time. And it wasn't like a super big house. But I had started seeing, like, these two orbs on the ceiling at night, like, when I would, like, lay down to sleep. And this went on for, like, a while. Like, this had started, like, age 5 to 8, somewhere between, like, 5 and 8, and even followed to another house when we moved from, like, age 8 to, like, 12. To where, like, when I would lay down at night on the... Like, wherever the light was at in the room, I would see, like, these two orbs at night, like, kind of, like, flying around and chasing each other, which I always thought was really weird. Like, I would actually, when I was real young, I would get scared and actually, like, run to my mom's room, you know, and, like, sleep on her floor. And they would, like, come in there and be, like, chasing each other around on the ceiling by the light, too. It was really weird. And that went on for, like, probably, like, four years. And that was for real. Like, not, like, the dark figures, like, right. teasing myself in the basement. This was, like, weird and just kind of, like, unexplainable. Was your mom usually asleep when these things were happening? Um, Yeah, but I would, like, I woke her up before, and she was just kind of, like, you just get, like, the brush off, you know? Like, well, I'll just go back to bed. <laughs> like, stuff like that, you know? That was kind of the answer for a lot of things growing up, but never really. I had asked my brother before, like if he had ever seen him or anything. And like, he said, like he didn't, but my mom, when I asked her one time, she was just kind of like changed the subject and was kind of weird, mm -hmm. but they were there. Like that's, that's what, probably one of the most unexplained things. Like I've ever went through my whole life. How big were they? Like baseball size, kind of like, but more oval. And they were like, one was brighter than the other, but they were just like two like weird orbs that would like go around the ceiling and chase each other. Like they were playing. And I used to like, at first I would get scared of it, but like over the years, like it would just be like, oh, like that just happens, you know? Like eventually I quit going to my mom's room. I would just like watch them and kind of just fall asleep. But there were like, there was a good year where like I would like be scared to go to sleep because I would be like, "What is this?" You know. Yeah. Now, did they have any color, or were they just kind of white? Well, they were like kind of like whitish yellow, like maybe like a weird blue tint to to them, and one was just like brighter than the other, but they were similar, similar in color, just kind of noticeably different that they were two. You know. Mm -hmm. Almost like if, like, two birds were flying around and chasing each other. It was just really weird. Yeah. And for, for how long a period did you see these? Probably, like, four years. Wow. And in two different houses. Oh, that's interesting. Which was weird, really weird to me. That's interesting. That was, like, the beginning of kind of, like, I don't know, getting into weirder stuff or paying, like paying attention, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, that's interesting. I don't, I mean, I've, you know, we've had people on who've seen orbs in their room before and all, but, uh, so was this a, a nightly occurrence or did it just happen kind of randomly? It would be like, I don't not like every night, but definitely weekly. Like it was normal. Interesting. For a long, like a long time. And then it was like probably around the age of 12 where it was like, okay, like that's not happening anymore. And I was in the same house, too, which was weird. It just kind of, like, stopped. They just stopped. That's interesting, too. Huh. (laughs) This is really weird. All right, so what else happened from there? So also also during that time, I had heard... I've never heard about this until it was actually an episode of yours. Someone was talking about, like, an Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Yeah. And I... There, it was that and like something about m- migraines like that maybe being linked to like getting migraines which I've also sort of had but more like s- kind of like sinus headaches than migraines um, but there was one time like at a uh, sleepover probably not the best of timelines but probably mm, like fourth fifth grade kind of like a friend's house, went over, watched movies, like stuff like that. And when there was probably like four to six of us there, and you kind of like, you know, eat pizza, popcorn, lay on the floor until you like pass out or watch movies and stuff. Right. And like, I would, like, I remember like looking over at one of my friends and like their face, like their nose, like getting longer and just like their face kind of like, growing out and just like getting weird and like i had never heard about this before and it kind of would like creep me out but it would be kind of fun you know Mm -hmm. like look at my friend like his face is changing you know right um which i like in like movies and stuff like that now but at the time it's also kind of like what is going on and i had never even like really thought about it or heard about anything until somebody on your show brought that up about alice in wonderland syndrome and then also something about migraines. I think they were talking about like a poster or something that would change for them. It must have been freaky to look over at your friend and see yeah. see them change. And there there were other times too where like you know, I stayed the night at another friend's house growing up and like similar, like their dog did something crazy or like I don't know, looking at a stack of clothes in the dark, you know. Mm-hmm. But that was all kind of in that same time. Like, and then also, you know, I would like come home and go to bed and on the ceiling would be like these two orbs chasing each other and would just be kind of crazy. Wow. So if you were at a sleepover or something, you wouldn't necessarily see the orbs. No, that was like strictly in those two houses growing up. Huh. Like I would go stay at my grandma's house a lot and like, you know, on the weekend, stuff like that, like get out of the house and go stay with my grandma. And it would, no, like never anything like that there. It was specifically in my two childhood homes. Now, after you see him a number of times, do you stop getting freaked out by him? Yeah, eventually I I would like, because at first it was just like scared, you know, like I would try like to stay up all night and not sleep. But eventually, like, it was just like, oh, like, everything's fine, you know? And I would just, I would kind of watch them. It almost be, like, relaxing. Like, I would watch them fly around on the ceiling and whatever they were doing. And then pass out, go to sleep. And then, like I said, it just stopped, like, around, like, about after four years, around age 12, sometime between, like, 10 and 12, it just stopped. Yeah, that's fascinating. I wonder if the same mechanism that sometimes is related to poltergeist activity in preteen kids. If it's also related to this, I don't know, just speculating. It's just, it's really interesting that it stopped at that time. Right. Then after, you know, listening to your show a lot, the whole thing about like, you know, the like stuff like this happening to people that like it either happens or it doesn't kind of thing. Like depending on who, I don't, I don't remember what the thing is, but maybe not everybody is susceptible to witnessing stuff like this. 
Yeah. It's, it's been an interest. Like these, those were like the precursors of being interested in it. So like in high school, like I got into like, you know, what are you going to do in high school? Like I played guitar in a punk band. I started messing with cameras and like, we would like go ghost hunting, you know, like bandmates. So what are we going to do now? What are we, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So like in the high school, we would go like, you know, the local spots. We went to tons of places. I went to like everything around here. Um, but there was one place that, that I guess it was like a house where like a guy had like murdered his whole family. And in the backyard, there would be two girls playing on a swing set and whatever. We went to this house and I took uh like some pictures someone was like smoking a cigarette in the driveway and we're looking at this house which was weird because i found out later that somebody actually lives in this house still but we didn't know at the time and we're parked like in front in the driveway and someone's smoking a cigarette and we take a couple of pictures and later like i i had uh went to school for photography too and like had film slr camera so like later we're in a dark room and we're developing pictures and actually see like this crazy, like the creepiest face I've ever seen pop up in one of these pictures in front of this house. And it looked like, like I actually got scared of this picture and like threw it away. Like I didn't even want to look at this picture, but it was like this crazy, like almost like demon face in front of this house. Mm. that was like supposedly haunted, you know? Yeah. And I, and I totally get that. I, you know, I've talked before about that tape I recorded of myself sleeping and, and hearing those weird beeps and stuff. And just at the time, I was not prepared for it. I threw it away. I just yeah, no, I did not want anything to do with that picture. Yeah. So like, you know, there people would be like, oh, you know, I want to see it. You know, I don't believe you. I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> yeah. Like, I threw that picture away. Yeah, I think it just was pointing in our lives where we just. I don't know. For whatever reason, it's like, nope, I'm not. I don't want it. <laughs> I, I right. don't want it. And that's when I actually like. I kind of, I kind of got out of like going to like weird places and stuff like that after that for a while, just because it was like, I don't know, it was kind of heavy and it was like, whatever was in that picture, like I don't think it was just a coincidence, you know, like it was something serious and kind of heavy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I'm done with that for a while. But then I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, this stuff is enticing and it, and it's seductive. I, you know, it's it's in that sense, it's kind of dangerous. Like uh, honestly, not to, right? You know, just be careful, everybody. <laughs> That's all. Right. And in all things, whether it's paranormal or not, just be careful. But yeah, it's it's but it's very very enticing. It's very hard to uh, the thrill you get from it. It's very hard to replicate that in any other way. At least I find. I agree. Like I said, the, the childhood stuff was just like random, random, and that kind. I think it just kind of like set a precursor for getting interested in it later in life. So, like another time, this would be we got this place called the the Gypsy Graveyard, and it's like I don't know, like twenty minutes from here. I live in Indiana, about forty minutes outside of Chicago. Okay, I think and somebody I, else talked about that place that was on the show. Nice. I yeah, I haven't heard that one. You know what I'll say? There's another. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I get to Bigfoot. Okay. Um. Yeah, Gypsy Graveyard, also known as the Southeast Grove Cemetery, was like. I still go there. I went there like a month ago. And it's one of my favorite places to go out here. They used to have a statue in the middle, and th- like things would get weirder, scarier, or whatever. Like the further back that you go, closer to the statue. The statue's not there anymore because people kind of like trash the place. They put up cameras and whatever. But there used to be this big, like kind of like looming angel statue in the middle. Supposedly like the eyes like have like dripped blood and like tons of weird stuff. It's, there's been a lot of paranormal groups to go there. Whatever. The place is crazy. One time we had went there and it was like three of us and we... It was like a real calm, calm day, like almost like no temperature, you know, like there's no wind, there's no whatever, trees aren't moving, like it's just real calm. And we were standing there and we're like in front of that statue when the statue was still there. 
and all like I actually had hair then. <laughs> Most of it's fallen out now. <laughs> and we're standing like in a circle kind of and all at the same time, like I think it, one of my friends, I don't even remember who it was. One of my friends was like, did you feel that or whatever? And at the same time, like I watched the person to my right's hair kind of just like flip up. Like if somebody like took their hand and like, you know, like if you took like a piece of long hair and just kind of like flipped it, like you were messing with somebody and like mm-hmm. flipped their hair up. And at the same time that he asked me that, I felt my hair do it. And I watched the other person to my right's hair do it at the same time. Like somebody like, ran around in a circle or like two hands flipped our hair up at the same time. It was really weird. And like I said, no wind, no nothing. Like it was calm. There's no explanation for it whatsoever. And it was just like kind of weird and creepy. And we all kind of like looked at each other and we're like, yeah, no. (laughs) We're like just kind of started walking back towards the gate and left that time. It was kind of, it was kind of weird. So before it happened to me, I used to think that was one of the, you know, when people would talk on ghost tours and they'd say they were pushed or they were pinched or, you know, someone grabbed, something grabbed them or something like this. I was pretty skeptical about that. I thought like a lot of people, look, you're in a spooky situation. Maybe just something happened. Something shifted in your pocket or in, in your, if you're carrying a bag in your bag or whatever, and you thought that happened until it happened to me. And now I know exactly what people are talking about. I had my pack pulled one night and a hundred percent, it was not like, there was no question to me that this wasn't something shifting in my pack. This was, it was a hundred percent pulled. And I'm a lot more sympathetic to that kind of stuff. Now after, after it happened to me, I'm like, okay, now I know what people are talking about. Right. And I'm happy. I've told people, I don't care who it is. I tell them all the same stuff, just like I'm telling you. And like, yeah, it would be like, yeah, right. And it's, it did like that happened. <laughs> there was no explanation for it other than, I don't know, something flipped our hair up at the same time. Yeah. It's a strange thing. It's a really strange thing. And until it happens, it, you can't explain like, like I could not, I couldn't sympathize with people. I just thought, I, I'm sure you felt that, but I don't know. You know, I guess I just wasn't a little incredulous before it happened to me. Yeah. Uh, that was a good one in that place uh, like i said i've been there a lot I and mean, we've i've messed with like cameras there like there's always orbs like different colored orbs just random stuff weird stuff and some of the stories there are like you know the people that live nearby like hide in the woods and like make noise and whatever and like pro- they probably do in the winter or not in the winter but like in the summer when it's nicer out and like looking for stuff to do Mm -hmm. But, like, this was not. And I've been there, like, so many times, different seasons or whatever. And it's just, that place place is for real, you know? It's crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. A lot of other places, just like like I said, I I have a photography degree and, like, mess with uh, a lot of cameras and lots of orbs that haunt. Like, my favorite thing to do was take new cameras to places that were haunted and see what you can find in the cameras and just had a lot of pictures of crazy stuff like that which all leads me into my Bigfoot story if you're ready for that one oh, I'm always ready for Bigfoot and anytime day or night I don't know if I'm, well, I'm ready for Bigfoot stories we'll see if I'm ready for Bigfoot when it happens <laughs> it's a high strange Bigfoot story too all right. Here's where this is crazy. Is this whole lifetime of like these weird paranormal things or like being interested in it or growing up watching the X Files or whatever. I never really thought like the concept of Bigfoot was that crazy. Like because now, like knowing more about it and like researching more about it like beyond the whole i don't know finding bigfoot or bigfoot the bfro or whatever it is like beyond that explanation Mm -hmm. like i didn't think that the idea of like you know a giant monkey in the woods was that crazy right right however i do a lot of hiking like 
we like daily like i try to walk like at least like two and a half miles a day mm-hmm. and just like stay really active not in the winter the winters are terrible here but after winter like now like it's starting to get nicer outside like i'll be outside like all the time so there's this place which is funny because finding bigfoot actually came out here to the indiana dunes national lake shore now in this episode, I don't, I don't have which one it was in my notes or anything like That's that. That's all right. But they came out here, and then they ended up going, whatever. They they came to somewhere by like the Dunes National Lake Shore, and they said that like it would be possible for like Bigfoot to be here, and it would probably be like a food source when they were like migrating from point A to point B or whatever but they didn't find anything. And then they ended up going to this place in Southern Indiana, like more towards Indianapolis called, called Morgan Monroe, which I'll get to. I've actually been there and that place is for real, but not for like your normal Bigfoot like that. So there's this place called the Collins Bog Trail at the Indiana Dunes National Lake Shore. And it's one of my favorite trails like to hike out here because I don't know why. It's just weird. The, like, the place feels weird. I've always thought that it was weird. It looks weird. It's, like, the hills are weird. Um, the trees are old. And then, like, in the background is, like, this weird, like, looming, like, doomy, almost, like, post-apocalyptic industrial, like, steel mill setting. Like, there's smokestacks at the steel mill next door. Mm-hmm. And there's weird ponds over here. And like the pictures just like turn out great there, whether it's like foggy, sunny, like it doesn't matter. Like the pictures just always turn out really cool at this place. So this actually is like, I had been going there like my whole life, but this would have been like pre, I don't want to talk about COVID, but Pre-COVID, like a year or two ago, when I was there, I got a new I got a new phone, new camera on my phone. So like cell phone cameras have came a long way, right? And like I've always been in cameras and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm messing with my new phone camera and like kind of impressed with what it's doing or whatever. So I just take like a bunch of random pictures. This is like a year or two ago. Bunch of random pictures throughout the day. And when I got home, I looked at one, which I actually think I sent you on Facebook. I looked at one and saw, like, the only thing I could explain it as was, like, oh, that's, like, a Bigfoot. Like, that's that's a Sasquatch, you know? Mm -hmm. There's nothing else that that could be. Like, there is a giant Sasquatch on this picture, but the... The catch is it's clear, like it's the outline of it and it's popping out like, you know, those uh, like seeing eye things where you like kind of cross your eyes a little bit and have the image pops out at you. Yeah, I know what they are. They do not work for me. I cannot get them to work, but yes. Nice. I knew somebody else that they don't work either, but it's basically like almost like that, how those kind of like pop out at you. It's there in that picture, like almost, I want to say ectoplasm, but not really, like kind of glitchy. I don't want to use the word pixely because it's crystal clear, like the shape of a Sasquatch. And then I think like I I turned it black and white too because it like pops even better in my opinion. And it's like that's when I started kind of like looking into Bigfoot stuff. I've watched like every documentary. I've read some books. I've got both of your books. Just like really interested in it. We are getting ready to drop two patron episodes as we do every month now. It's a two-parter episode with some Bigfoot stuff. Flannel Man stuff, some other strangeness woven in there. The best way to support Strange Familiars is to become a patron at Patreon. It's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. 
You get over 70 patron shows as soon as you sign up. You can go back and listen to all of those. And we're doing two patron shows a month for the time being, at least. We always do at least one patron show every month. It's a full episode of Strange Familiars. Lately, we've been doing two full episodes of Strange Familiars for our patrons. So there's new patron episodes being added all the time. Go ahead and check it out. Patreon.com slash Strange Familiars. If you don't like the idea of a subscription like Patreon, you can make a one-time donation. Go to strangefamiliars.com. Look under the show notes for any episode. There's a paypal.me link. You can click that and make a one-time donation. This is where like that whole like high strangeness thing comes in is because like in in your book you actually talk about uh the lady in white yeah and so at that place the college bog trail at the indiana dunes national lake store sure one of like the most famous hauntings in i don't want to say the state of indiana because it's probably not but definitely this smaller part like in northwest indiana close to chicago has always been Diana of the Dunes, who was, I don't, I don't have those notes here. I don't remember her name, Mm -hmm. but like was whatever her name was, this lady who something had happened and she walks around basically the beach at night looking for whatever. She had black hair. She liked the beach. She loved the area. And that's why I guess she like haunts haunts it right like your normal local legend Mm -hmm. but every like even if you don't believe in ghosts like people believe in that story like it's a huge one out here i think that i've also caught her on camera at this the same place and that's the lady in white because she's dressed in white like that's her thing is she's like dressed in a white dress i was gonna ask yeah she's got the long black hair and like i think that i got like a picture of her too Interesting. And this is the same place that Finding Bigfoot went to. Yeah, same place. Super interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And also, like, same area where I've got that Bigfoot photo on what I think is, like, a Bigfoot clear. Right. What else is crazy about that picture is, I don't remember the documentary, what it's called, but there's this... (laughs) This is going to sound like every Bigfoot documentary. But there is one where this lady is talking about going hunting with her husband. And they're up in deer stands or whatever they do in the trees. And she's watching. I want to say she's watching like through a flip phone or she maybe she took her flip phone out to like try to capture it. But she saw something go from like one tree to another tree. And she described it as like a, uh, I think she used the word ectoplasm or like clear or outline or whatever. This is the the sort of predator-like sighting. Yeah. 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 I remember the, I don't know if I saw the documentary, but I've, I have think I've seen the footage. I know who you're talking about. I, I Not personally, but, but I've come across this person's account before. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, she said it went from like one tree to the other. And... On the documentary, it shows it, and it was kind of like what it looked like in that picture that I got. Like, it, like the only way to explain it, you know, like was like this clear sphere, this clear whatever that just kind of like went, <laughs> you know. And I didn't, I didn't see it that day, but I saw it. I definitely saw it in the picture. And I also, like, it felt weird. Like, when you, like, think back, you know, you're like, okay, like, when I took that picture, like, something felt weird because that that place, like, always kind of feels weird. Mm -hmm. I love these women in white accounts where Bigfoot pops up. It's, It's a lot more common than I ever thought. It's pretty amazing. And then the BFRO in Finding Bigfoot says they don't exist there. But what else is funny about that is that, after COVID, you know, more people started to kind of, it seemed like more people started to like go out and hike on trails. It seemed like definitely out here because they like, they shut down the city of Chicago and 
a lot of them started coming out here to like our trails because our state parks didn't close. Mm -hmm. So like our trails got busier, like more covered with trash and like a lot busier than they ever had been. So a lot of this stuff, like I would see or like feel weird stuff there for like for a while. And then like all like those stories I just told you. And then it also kind of seemed like it chilled out Yes, when more people started like going to that area. Yeah. Uh, we've noticed that as well. When, when a, certain places we go, if there's a bunch of people there, you might as well just get in your car and turn around because mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be dead. Yeah. So that was also pretty noticeable. I almost, I took a tape recorder there one time. and was trying to get like, cause I've heard like weird stuff. Like I don't even know how to explain it, but weird almost like like yell like almost like a digital kind of like squeal is how i'm going to explain it Mm -hmm. but kind of like i don't know stereotypical of like bigfoot stuff now when you say digital do you mean it it had almost like a mechanical quality to it yeah like almost kind of like glitchy like uh what they call it like a bit crusher Mm -hmm. like with music like yeah definitely like something like that and also like loud but kind of also off in the distance and close to you yeah that makes sense yeah no it's hard to place them sometimes yeah yeah i've heard that a lot and i also heard that uh, i'll get there but another place too it's super interesting to me how the bfro will sit there and say there's no bigfoot here (laughs) when when Everyone else in the country is telling them there's no Bigfoot anywhere, you know, and and they're sitting there telling other people, well, there's no Bigfoot here. It's, it's just hilarious to me. But uh, anyway, it's none of my That's because Bobo didn't see him, though. Right, right. Yeah, that's how I felt, too. Well, I mean, I guess if you're looking for a breeding population, you know, it's it's, it's hard to say they exist anywhere. You're going to have to say they, they travel through because a breeding population of giant ape men is going to leave a mark. Right. That's funny. I was that picture though. It just kind of changed, like it changed everything. I was like, "All right, like that's what that is." Yeah, yeah, it's really, really interesting because, well, it's and it's funny to me too how you get into this stuff and like, I wasn't a UFO guy. I always loved Bigfoot since I was a little kid. Ghosts a little bit, but you know, Bigfoot was really my thing. Bigfoot and witches, I I love those two things. But not a UFO guy at all. And then I have these, you know, quote unquote abduction experiences. It's like you don't get to choose sometimes. It it comes to you in whatever way it wants to. Right. So that was like a year or two ago. With that, I've been there more recently too. We actually went there a couple weekends ago. It was nice out. This winter was terrible. Before winter we took a little trip to I always after watching that that finding Bigfoot episode where they came out here I wanted to they went to this other place it's called Morgan Monroe State Park which is like notorious for it uh, there's a couple different things it's notorious for like Bigfoot sightings it's near what is it Brown Brown County State Park out there it's near there Notorious for Bigfoot sightings, notorious for there's a haunted cemetery there with, I forget the story, but it's like a baby, baby something. There's actually a grave at the cemetery. What was it called? Uh, Step Step or Steep Cemetery, something like that. And there's a baby Lester. That's what it is. And there's a grave there that literally says baby Lester. And people take, like, stuffed animals and, like, kids' toys. And it's really kind of the creepiest thing you've ever seen. At the middle of this, like, huge protected forest and the cemetery. And I guess there's, like, like the baby haunts it or the the mom is a witch or some crazy story. Mm -hmm. And that place was, it was creepy. But... What I wanted to mention was that Finding Bigfoot show, after they didn't find any here, they went to this place 
and they had like probably one of like their more successful episodes at this place. And when we first got here, we were walking like on this trail. I think it was like a, what was it? Like 10.6 mile trail we did the one day. And like in the first mile or so, we, we stopped, my girlfriend stopped. She said, what? And it was like, I heard something. It was like that same, like kind of like digital bit crusher, like scream, like in my ear, just like I had heard at this other place a couple of times that I tried to get on tape. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, like maybe this Bigfoot thing is for real here too, you know? Cause that was the sound that I had associated with the other place. And was there was the same sound like i had heard that before and i heard it here too did your girlfriend hear it too or just you no she stopped she heard something else but not not that interesting well it was not like like i was like wait what and then i heard that Mm -hmm. she heard something else that was weird that weirded her out yeah that's interesting that place baby luster that was crazy. Oh, that same that same weekend we went to a. Uh, <laughs> all right, this place is a place called Brazil, Indiana, which is like probably forty minutes or so from this state park near Indy. They're all kind of like near. Like I'm probably two and a half hours from Indy. Mm-hmm. There's this place, Hell's Gate. And I always try to like hit up all these these famous spots when I go anywhere, just like bookstores like whatever hell's gate which i guess was in an episode of supernatural i've heard recently when i was talking to somebody about this hell's gate was this is my girlfriend doesn't necessarily believe like in like the the kind of like the occult paranormal stuff Mm -hmm. until I think like this how at least I started one of our first dates we talked about. I told her my Bigfoot story. <laughs> I told her the Bigfoot story. It was crazy. She's still here though. So Hell's Gate, she was like, okay, that place is for real. And we're driving. It's like 40 minutes out from where we were. Gra- gravel road. There's still gravel roads here. I have like a newer Toyota Camry, right? And I didn't want to drive. I didn't want to drive on the gravel, but I was like, no, I want to go to this place called Hell's Gate. So we're driving. We're on gravel for a long time, like long enough to where I was like, come on, maybe this is a bad idea. (laughs) We're driving and out of nowhere, we're like, and I had seen a couple pictures online and it was like, I don't know, like if we're going to find it, you know? And then out of nowhere, it was like, bam bam, that's it like and it's crazy because it's like it's all covered in graffiti it's like it you know when you're there Mm -hmm. and it was like oh okay so we parked and kind of got out and walked around a little bit and it was literally like probably one of the heaviest feelings i've ever had and this was like you know compared to the the dark figures in the basement but watching orbs fly around on the ceiling at night like all this weird stuff my whole life right like this place was heavy and it just felt like we should like we shouldn't be there but we got to take pictures because we're there i just drove on gravel like we're gonna walk around a little bit so i go one of the things is like you're supposed to like park i don't know you drive through it or park in the tunnel and honk your horn or something and blood drips on the walls like that's the story something like that Mm -hmm. which i'm not really into that i'm not doing all that but i am gonna walk around and take some pictures right so i walk like halfway through i'm like i'm not walking through hell's gate but i'm gonna go to the middle of it so i walk in like i'm in the tunnel which is really just like a really narrow one-way road. Um, We definitely didn't see anybody else while we were there. And my girlfriend was out. She was kind of like taking pictures like outside of it, and I'm in there. And at the time, like I had stopped moving. She had stopped moving, and I totally still heard footsteps inside this tunnel. Hmm. And it was kind of amazing 
and it also freaked me out pretty bad. And that just like on top of like the like that total heavy feeling was just like it was kind of a lot that day. Like she was, we like looked at each other, like all right, like it's time to go, kind of thing. Eventually, and we're like, yeah, like let's go. And like we talked about it for a while, and it was even kind of like hard to sleep that night. Like it was that was a heavy heavy day. That place is one of the darkest places that I've probably been forever. Is this named like Hell's Gate by legend, or is it actually the actual place name? Like if you look on a map, will it say that? Uh, yeah, I think it will pop up on a map because it's like kind of like popular place to go for some reason. It has to do with local legend, though. Uh, that's in Brazil, Indiana, and I guess it's one of like. This is funny because you know all about Toad Toad Road, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So the whole like different gates or like uh, what like a portal to hell or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like Hell's Gate is supposedly like one of six or one of seven bridges in that area, and acts as like the portal to hell. Interesting. And it's dark. Like, it's dark, and people, like, I think people go there and do crazy stuff and, like, have made it darker, Mm -hmm. but that place is heavy. Ever wanted to break out of your cubicle and into a business where you can call the shots? You Break Guy Fix is looking for passionate self-starters interested in a franchise opportunity in the booming electronics repair industry. At You Break Guy Fix, we help reconnect people to the devices that they rely on so that they can get back to what matters most. This is a big responsibility, and from the moment you join our family, our franchisees are provided with the resources and support to bring affordable and convenient electronics repair to your community. Did we mention that with amazing partners like Samsung and Google, You Break I Fix franchisees also have access to the highest quality parts and personalized training out there, as well as specialized tools. It's true. And it's also easy to visit YouBreakIFix.com forward slash franchising and learn more about your big break at your very own You Break I Fix. And we also went to another one of the places while we were out there called Avon's Bridge, which is kind of cool because the town like put up a, like when they do historic stuff and they put up landmark, whatever, like oh, signs yeah. and all that. Mm-hmm. There's one that says like haunted bridge, blah, 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 blah. And it kind of like, it's got the story of this construction worker falling from the bridge and they just buried him in the concrete like when they built this bridge and it's like famous in this town. Wow. And while we were there, we were walking around in the, like the Creek underneath this bridge, like taking pictures, walking around a little bit. This guy was out walking his dog and he, I was under the bridge and he had seen like my girlfriend and asked like, if she was okay. Like is the nicest dude ever walking his dog. And uh, she was like, yeah, I'm fine. And then like, I came out from underneath the bridge and he saw me. He asked us if we saw anything yet. And I was like, we didn't really see nothing, but we kind of like felt felt it there a little bit. And he had told us a story about when he was there as a, uh, like in high school, they used to go hang out. He used to actually be able to get up in the bridge, but they had to close it off of the fence. And he said they used to hang out up there and they would like see and hear crazy stuff all the time. It's kind of cool. There's hiking trails there too. It was awesome. Yeah, these places, these like sort of like urban legend places. Kind of. Like if you search like haunted Indiana, they're going to pop up most of mm-hmm. most of what I talked about, honestly. I wonder if it's a chicken and the egg kind of thing. Like I always wonder if if these places started out haunted with weird stuff going on or if somehow they got that reputation and then because people put that kind of energy in them and visit them over the course of you know however many years. Right. Do they then, you know, kind of take that on? Yeah, that's a good point. That's that was kind of like what got me into like visiting them too. Like 
well, is this place for real? Like, you know, it seems like some are and some aren't. And that's where it got fun, like taking cameras and seeing, you know, like seeing, trying, you know, trying to see what was real and what wasn't. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like you can feel it though. Like, like Hell's Gate, like Hell's Gate was heavy. You felt that, like that, that time we were in front of that house where that guy killed his family and the two girls swing on the swing set in the backyard. That place was heavy. And like, you know, I definitely think that that feeling's associated with darker things and all that, but it's like, it's noticeable, you know? I think so. I, I think there's definitely certain places have feelings that go with them. I know when I took Chad to Site 7 for the first time, you know, we're usually, Chad and I are usually way out in the middle of, you know, either Michaud Forest or if we're up at, at Pandemonium, we're in the, you know, the middle of that state forest. And, you know, he likes to be as, as far away from civilization as he can be. And Site 7 just isn't. It's, it's surrounded by farms and there's uh, some other stuff there. But he was shocked at how oppressive it felt there and, and how weird it got there, being you know that close to civilization. Right. So yeah, some this stuff definitely you know, sometimes it can have a, a definite feeling to it. And beware of places with hell and devil names for sure. Oh, that yeah. that is a thing. I don't know, uh again, it's a chicken and egg thing. I don't know whether, you know, somebody named it that and then people we got it a reputation or more than likely it was named that because stuff was going on there anyway i think i agree totally have have you seen the movie toad road yeah i have (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's um i did like how they sort of represented the seven gates as not real gates because i've i've gotten in several you know arguments with with local people who claim they've gone through the the different gates there's no gates out there i've been out there a million times I'm, I think my son and I and Chad are probably, you know, some of the only people in modern times who, who've hiked the entire length of the road there. There's no gates. There's there's one, like, farm gate at one end, but there's that's it. Nice. There's no gates out there. But in that movie, they did something interesting, and they sort of uh, represented the gates as, as sort of, you know, not physical things, but, but kind of like states of mind. And uh, I thought that was interesting, but uh, in general... I was not predisposed to like the movie because I, the filmmakers, they actually filmed it around here. Right. But the filmmakers uh, literally came out and said they had to bring in actors from elsewhere because I believe the quote was, no one in York County is cool enough to be in their movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, ah, okay, I, I really don't like your movie. That's funny. I don't know. I, that was one of those movies that I just happened to like watch one day, you know, and it kind of stuck like, and doing a lot of hiking, it's funny because, like, you see a gate or whatever, and you're kind of just like, like, it, it was almost good. <laughs> oh, no. Other than I did, like I said, I really like the concept of there not being, like, actual real physical gates. They kind of, like, sort of this symbolic representation of gates. But uh, the drug use kind of aspect of the movie was a little heavy handed, I thought. But oh, yeah. uh, in general, yeah, it was a, it was okay. I mean, it was definitely a kind of a B movie kind of thing, but. Uh, it could have been way worse. I, I, I was dreading going into it because I thought, oh, they're going to do the mad doctor thing and all that. And, and to their credit, they did not. That's funny. That's actually, I think that's how I found, like was introduced to you, like on that podcast you used to be on. Because I was, I was telling somebody about this movie and just kind of, I was look, like then looking it up or whatever. And then your name had popped up with, I think like your book or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I started listening to that other podcast and I was a fan. Well, I'm glad you found me. It's random. That movie being the, what did it? I have one other story. All right, bring it. I go to this other place out here like weekly and it's kind of like it's a it's a abandoned Girl Scout camp. Like it used to be a Girl Scout camp, but the guy that ran it, or they used to run it, or they still do stuff there. I don't know, but they like basically kind of they have like hiking trails there, and they actually like keep up with it pretty good. And instead of just like condemning the property or not doing anything with it, and it's kind of like open to the public and. 
a lot of people go there and like hike or run. a lot of people actually like it's only like four mile loop or something like that so a lot of people actually like go run and like work out and things like that but it's like 10 minutes from my house so like when i go try to like get a walk in or whatever like after work or things like that i've been going to this place for like a year or two now well one time it's always felt like kind of like there'd be like hot and cold spots it seems like which is weird to me i don't really know much about that like there'll be times where there's like it's noticeably cold in the spot and not anywhere else which is kind of weird and it's not like there's more of a draft or more shade like it'll be like in the bright sunlight, it'll be noticeable, which has been kind of, kind of, just kind of weird there. But one time, this would have been like probably, I don't know, the last year or so, me and my girlfriend went there, we were walking, and there's like uh, telephone lines or power, power lines, like power lines that kind of run through like the middle of this place too. And they'll crackle a little bit when you walk underneath them. But one time, like, we were there and we stopped and we saw, like, weird weird lights. (laughs) This is, like, really my only, like, weird light and weird light in the sky experience ever. And the closest thing I've been able to find, like, online was, like, something about drones when they, like, test fly drones or something like that or do, like, a weird drone show. But it what like it wasn't this like it was like eight or nine maybe ten random lights in a row, but offset flying along the sky just really weird really weird pace really weird whatever and there's actually a a show with uh Ozzy Ozzy Osbourne Sharon Osbourne and the kid their kid and he's like showing them like weird like haunted or like paranormal videos or whatever i guess like blowing their mind on camera is the object of the show i've put it on randomly like literally two times and one of the episode one of the clips that he shows them is a very similar clip to like what we saw that day and it was funny to see their reaction you know it was during the day you saw these yeah, during the day. It was like maybe an hour or two before dark. Wow. Um, but yeah, noticeably during the day. I have pictures somewhere. But the closest thing I've and they didn't know, like they, they did like their research on that show or talk about it, they couldn't explain it. And then when I looked it up online, the closest thing I could find was like I forgot what they call it, like a drone party or a drone blah 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 blah. Something like that. You'd think you would see some kind of structure other than the lights during the day or there would be like you know similar like more in more in line maybe these were like like eerie like out of place just moving weird and that was kind of unexplainable like i was just like what is that i'm horrible at estimating how high things are off the ground but i i will ask do do you have any guess like a little bit taller than power lines okay but like not like you know how when I don't know, what are they like crop dusters or when they like check out power lines mm-hmm. it wasn't that like because that would have been usually they're airplanes I think but like yeah again you would have seen some kind of you know structure to the yeah to the craft. and there wasn't it was like if you know when the people set off like uh, those candles that got the little parachute yeah and they like go into the sky and move all crazy that's what these were doing it was like eight to twelve of them. Hmm. just moving really weird, but sort of together, but sort of not in a row. And color on these? Like a yellow, like a whitish yellow. Mm-hmm. It's glo- like glowing. There's glowing lights in the sky. It was really weird. Do they look like LEDs or do they look like um, more like a like a candle or something? Yeah, more like a candle. Hmm. Yeah, dimmer than LE- LEDs. But like a noticeable, almost orb kind of floating, just kind of like illuminating in the sky. It sounds crazy. No, no. And I mean, just I have to, you know, put on the badly fitting skeptics hat. 
Any chance they were Chinese lanterns, you know, paper lanterns? Yeah, they definitely weren't, because I've seen them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's why it was weird. I was like, I don't know what that is. Like, I can't even find anything online. Like, I, you know, you type in weird lights in the sky on Google. and Yeah, and again, during the day, you should be able to, you would, like, I've seen those Chinese lanterns at night, and for a, a long time, I was like, what is that? Those are incredible. And then after a while, it, somehow I figured it out. That's what they were. People were lighting off these paper lanterns and they were like floating up and that's what they were uh, but again during the day you would think you'd see the outside of the you know the paper structure of the paper lantern yeah and that the like it's the closest thing it could could be would be like that drone thing but it's i don't i don't think so yeah like they, they oh, i watched videos of that and they're like more and more like symmetrical when they this was just really weird very interesting that it was during the day too. Yeah, I don't know if I'd rather see lights during the day or not. I th- I, th- I might be a little bit weirded out because I've seen them at night before, but I don't know what I do during the day. Like, cause I don't know, I don't know. That's weird, really weird. Yeah. And she she thinks that place is weird. That that's weird. And but like before that, she thought it was weird. This is like deer, like deer. We'll see deer at random times or like. Just like scare them, like we'll go around the curve and there'll be like a couple deer there, just doing crazy, like making crazy noises that you don't normally hear deer make, stuff like that. I've never really felt like anything weird other than like hot and cold spots there. And those lights, though, those lights were just, I don't know, beyond. That's neat. Like I said, I haven't seen them during the day, but now I'm going to start looking for them. Maybe I just haven't been looking. I'll try to find a picture because I know I know I got pictures of it. I just I got a lot of pictures everywhere. John, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. Uh, let us know if you're out there and you see anything else, but also be careful on your journeys. Okay, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to come on the show. It was awesome to talk to you. We have some thank yous. I would like to thank Chris D. from Iowa and Scott B. from California for their PayPal donations. Thank you very much. We're moving from photo of the week to curiosity of the week. We're kind of expanding and we're going to do more than just photos, which I'm excited about. Not that I'm unexcited about the photos. Yeah, you better not. (laughs) But we have a photo tonight. Maybe the the last photo of the week. Not that there won't be photos as part of the curiosity Mm. of the week but we're going to expand our offerings to other ephemera and neat things. But we'll call this the last photo of the week. And it's a beautiful German Shepherd. A perfect pup. Do you have any clue when this photo was taken? That one's kind of a mystery to me. I'd say it's probably anywhere from the 30s to the 50s, but he's just so beautiful. I just love him. Yeah, very, very handsome German Shepherd. Yeah, it's a nice profile image. If you go to the show notes under this episode at strangefamiliars.com, you can see an image of this photo. If you click on that, it'll take you to our Etsy shop, where you can buy this and other photos of the week. There's a photo of the week section there. There's also an artwork section there, where you can get prints of my artwork or originals. There's a book section there, where you can buy all of my books. If you get them from Etsy, they come signed by me, including my art book, Apparitions, Illustrations of the Other. And we also have Monsters Under the Hospital Bed. Not really a book, more of a booklet. A chapbook. A chapbook? I like that. A, a digest-sized <laughs> chapbook. <laughs> that collects my artwork I did when I was recovering from my MS attack. There's also Strange Familiar's t-shirts there and all kinds of neat stuff. Our shop name is Lost Grave. That's one word. But if you type in Strange Familiar's in the search bar, you should see our stuff come up. Etsy's another great way to support what we do. While you're on Etsy, make sure to check out Chad Shop, Rock Rabbit Outdoors, Check out our friends at Karmic Garden as well. That's it for this week. We will be back soon with another episode of Strange Familiars. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts, music, books, art, podcasts, and more. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. If you want to hear more or purchase music from Stone Breath, you can go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com. Strange Familiars is on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars. You can also join the Strange Familiars gathering group there. 
We're on Instagram, at Strange Familiars. And you can always find us on the web at strangefamiliars.com. your kids' money habits start as early as the second grade? Help them build money skills for the real world with GoHenry, the debit card and financial learning app for kids 6 to 18. They'll check off chores in the app, set savings goals, and get their own customized card. It's easy to automate allowance, track spending, and more, so they get independence and you get to set the boundaries. Guide their learning every step of the way and stay up to date with real-time notifications in your parent app. Families love it. GoHenry has over 1.5 million members, and 92% of parents said their kids were more money confident after using the app. Start your kids on their journey to become money smart adults. Get started at GoHenry.com, promo code SMART.